Hey everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. This is a, uh, a video that I've been asked to do for about a year now, and here we are. We're gonna talk about double time playing. What is double time playing? How do we get to it? Uh, it's a good question, and many, many, many people have been asking me about this, and it took me about a year to sort of think it through and figure out exactly what I wanted to say. There's, you know, there's some of the obvious things that we can say about double time playing, but I really did want to, you know, think it through a little bit more. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. So now, double time playing is literally what those words mean. Now, think about this. An alien comes down to Earth. I don't know how often that happens to you, but eight, ten times for me. Alien walks up to me and says, Jeff, tell me about this jazz stuff. Uh, at the edge of the universe, we're hearing a lot about jazz. We love it. Clearly, I'm making this up. Um, and uh, tell me about jazz. And I'm like, well, and the, 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 the alien says, well, tell me, Jeff, is it a lot of uh, whole notes in jazz? And I think about it and say, no, actually, it's not, not a lot of whole notes. And the alien says, okay, is it a lot of half notes? And I think, and it's like, no, not a lot of half notes either. Quarter notes. I'm thinking there's more quarter notes, you know, the walking bass and the ride cymbal, but, you know, no, that's not really the sound of jazz. And I think about it, I say, well, actually, eighth notes. Probably if you add up all the notes played in the name of jazz for the last hundred plus years, there's probably more eighth notes in the pile than sixteenth notes or eighth note triplets or half notes or whatever. Ah, so now the alien knows a little more about jazz. Jazz is really about eighth notes. Okay, so that's the normal pace. That's single time. When you open up a transcription book of any instrument, you're going to see a lot of eighth notes in there. So double time is double that. What is twice as fast as an eighth note? A sixteenth note. So the question now, so the question becomes, Jeff, how do you play double time? The answer is you play sixteenth notes. Play twice as fast. So in a way, the answer is sort of a smart-ass answer, like how do you run? Well, walk faster. Walk really fast, and you're going to find yourself running. No child, no little kid ever asks, how do you run? They figure it out, right? It's intuitive. You lean forward and get your feet under you, and you keep going. And of course, there's the old saying about you have to learn how to walk before you can run. So the biggest thing I can say with this double time playing is, can you play burning killer eighth notes? Because that is what we are doubling. You can't double something that's not there and is kind of rickety. So okay, so I'm suggesting that you have really good eighth notes down and good feel and all of that stuff because we want to double it, right? The other thing is, um, now, what do we play? So we're going to look at that right away. What are the notes that we play? And so my, my, the first thing I'm going to say to you is, well, can you play really coherent stuff that sounds kind of right with eighth notes in single time? You have to walk before you can run. What are the odds that when your fingers are moving twice as fast, your brain is cranking twice as fast, that you'll come up with as good or better stuff. The odds, not so good, I'm here to tell you. So um, really, the, the precursor to playing great double time is playing great single time. Can you, you know, play through this stuff? So of course, that's what the previous 120 some videos I've been talking about. So yeah, that's, you know, that's really the place to start. But let's do this. Look at item number one on the sheet. I have a great, Charlie Parker lick here, and this is something he would often play double time. That is what you see in item number two. You see this lick in sort of the traditional double time, but what I've done is written it out in single time, eighth notes. It sounds like this. All right, so really, really classic, wonderful 2-5-1 progression played in single time. Bird, I don't know if he ever played it like that. Now, item number two, we have that lick written out twice as fast. So if you look at item number one, you'll see the parenthesis under it, and that's identifying the lick, all those notes, right? Now, if you look at item number two, those notes get squished into 16th notes. They last half as long. So instead of being two and a half measures long, that lick is only one measure and a beat long. Everything is happening twice as fast. And then there's some stuff tacked onto the end of the lick. And I sort of, you know, put that together from various things Charlie Parker played to make it fit into a nice two, five, one. So here's the first lick again. <laughs> A 
And here is the second lick. You could hear it there. You heard it the first time, you heard it the second time. Now here's the thing, I didn't play it at double time. But the point is, the double time lick came from the single time lick. It came from, out from Charlie Parker's ability to put together a really coherent sound. So now I'll play them at sort of single time and double time. Example one, example two. There's a lot to be learned there. So, uh, so let's go over some of the things that don't usually get told to us, and maybe you picked it up, maybe not. Single time is typically eighth note. That's what we told the alien. We explained it to the alien. Eighth notes, buddy. All right, so when you hear 16th notes, when you see 16th notes on the page, you're probably looking at double time, right? Okay, so one other thing, and I put it on the PDF, by the way, if you'd like to get a hold of this PDF, there's good stuff on it. If you want to get a hold of it, write me, diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. It's free. It's always free. Every PDF is free. Okay, so um, when we see it written out as double time, eighth notes and sixteenth notes, cool. Okay, now here's the thing. Um, if you play, you can't play double time if the tempo is too fast. Because think about it. If you're playing a song at 200, and you want to play double time, you now have to be able to play at 400. Not many people on earth can do that, right? So double time typically happens on slower songs, a ballad or a slow swing tune, when it is actually humanly possible to play twice as fast. So that's an interesting thing to notice. Here's a big one that I hear a lot of students kind of messing up. And now I know you know that I work with adult students. Those are my folks. Here on uh, Digging Deeper, these videos I'm gearing towards adult students who aren't getting maybe great uh, guidance or aren't getting any guidance. You're trying to figure this out on your own. I hope I can be helpful with that. And of course, that's what we do at jazzwire.net. If you like really seriously want to get moving faster, that's the place to be. Here's the point I was going to make, is when I'm playing those eighth notes, I'm swinging. Da ba da ba da ba da ba da. I'm also playing wrong notes sometimes. <laughs> um, now, when I played double time, was I still swinging? Ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da. You can't do it. You can't swing at double time. There's no time. So, the rhythm section is swinging. I'm a jazz musician. I'm playing swing. The song is swing. We're swinging. But when I play double time, those 16th notes are straight. Classical music, Baroque, straight 16th notes. So that's an important thing to know, is that when we play at faster swing tempos, we have to change our feel. So okay, we're already noticing some things. So I've already warned you that if you can't sort of play and improvise great jazz single time, you won't be able to do it twice as fast. That doesn't make sense. So for many of us, ah, time for me to go back and figure out how to play changes a little bit better. And of course, I'd love to help you with that. Now you notice I was able to take a single time lick, item number one on the sheet, play it twice as fast, and it became a double time lick. So often that's the case. You can take a single time lick and practice it twice as fast. And now you have to sort of make sure that the harmony fits and works but it does. Now, I'll tell you, this Charlie Parker lick is a very famous one. Anybody that's used the Charlie Parker Omni book has played this lick hundreds of times. It's in many of the solos from the Charlie Parker Omni book. This was one of Bird's things that he played a lot. Now, here's the thing. I wrote it starting on beat one. There's instances where Bird would start this lick on beat four or beat three or a pickup to beat two. He used it all over the place. So this was a lick that he used also in various keys and on different chords. This same lick in this same key, he would use over different chords, starting in different places of the measure in different contexts. So that tells me something. That tells me Bird practiced this. So that tells me even though he was a genius, he was also a human genius. He played this in one key. He didn't play this on all 12 keys. And he used this a lot in different settings. So this was one of his go-to moves. He knew 
a handful of jokes, and this is one of the jokes he liked to tell, right? So, uh, so that tells us something. Was Charlie Parker improvising this amazing double timeline? And the answer is no, he was not improvising. He was playing something he figured out, he essentially composed and practiced, and then he would play it. So that's a big thing you need to know about double time is a lot of the times the stuff people play when they're playing double time is something they've worked out. They've practiced that. And that includes a genius like Charlie Parker. And we can point to other people, uh, you know, from different eras of jazz. I know their double time licks. And, you know, we could, we could name names. Michael Brecker comes to mind, one of, one of the great improvisers of modern jazz. But he had his go-to moves and the licks that he liked to use, and he would often piece them together in similar ways. Did that make him less a genius? No. That made him great at preparing, is what that made him. He dressed for success. He knew how to show up on the gig and sound like a million bucks. Okay, so there's another lesson about how to play double time is work some stuff out. Steal some great licks. And now I want to talk to you about this third lick. This is something that I put together. Um, I was, I think what it was is I was preparing to do a, a, a big show, a uh, guest artist in Minneapolis or something like that. And, uh, and I was doing a big band arrangement of Body and Soul. And so I was transcribing Pete Chrisley, one of my very favorite sax players, a solo that he did. Um, and so I sort of took bits of this great double timeline he did. I think I got uh, lazy and didn't like even transcribe the whole line. And so I started his idea and then I sort of plugged in some stuff on my own. That's what item three is. So check it out. Double time material is very often simple. And we need something that that covers a lot of space, right? Because we're going to fit a lot of notes into not so long. So for what I see, from what I see, there's a lot of scales, often bebop scales, in double time. There are a lot of enclosures. And if you don't know what enclosures are, I've done some really good videos on that, and that'll help. The idea of encircling a note. And there's a lot of arpeggios in uh, double time. Look at item number three, and I'll play this thing through for you one time. <laughs> Guess what? I've practiced that before. <laughs> I've practiced it in all 12 keys at a lot of different tempos. So let's tear it apart so you can kind of see what I'm saying. So I sort of built this from pieces that I found laying around the practice room, from pieces I stole from Chris Lieb and from Michael Brecker and from other places. Look at the parentheses underneath. So here's number one. That is a minor bebop scale. It's a minor scale, start on the root, it's going up, it's got a little passing tone. Item number two, an enclosure. A very simple enclosure. There you go. Item number three and four, number three is a scale going up, and number four is a pattern I practiced a lot. I call it five, three, two, one. Item number five, a diminished lick I like. <laughs> Item number six, kind of a cool, almost R&B blues kind of lick. Put them all together, and we've built ourselves sort of a cool double time 251 lick. And there you go. That's how you play double time. Um, so think about all that stuff we talked about. The idea that double time is really just twice as fast, right? That double time, you have to play swing or the feel is going to be all screwy and you won't be able to play fast enough. The idea that you have to be able to create decent lines in single time if, you're, if you have a, a hope of being able to do a double time. 
The idea that our heroes worked this stuff out, at least to begin with, and yes, of course, Charlie Parker could improvise double time. I'm not saying he didn't, but I'm saying it's very clear that he had his favorite double time licks too. So that idea of actually work it out, compose something, you know, take it and use it. And you can see in my example, I included that just to show you how I was able to put together a pretty flashy, cool, impressive uh, double time lick, just connecting a bunch of pieces. And the individual pieces were actually pretty simple most of the time. So that's, that's kind of a big deal. Now, here's what I'm not gonna tell you in this video. Uh, how do you wiggle your fingers real fast? So, right, the velocity, okay. So that ability to have your tone move in time, that ability to play that fast. Well, I tell you what, I play piano and I play bass and I play drums. I'm at different ability levels on those. So I can play faster on the drums than I can play on bass because I played drums for 20 years, I played bass for five years. So yes, I don't have the chops to play good double time. Now here's the thing, on bass, I know what to play. I'll play this, except for my ability on the instrument does not allow me to do it. There's, there's all sorts of little technical things I need to work on. So for a lot of us, there's going to be technique, basic technique on the instrument that keeps us from playing super uber duper fast uh, double time, right? But that doesn't mean we can't learn or push towards it. So I love this request of doing this video. That, that was very, very cool. So I tell you what, before we go, I want to let you know, um, I'm doing some Digging Deeper workshops up in Canada coming up in December 2019. I announced them last week and I got the dates wrong. I'm going to be playing at the Rex in Toronto. I'm going to look here on uh, Friday, December 6th. So I'm playing a gig with the best musicians in Toronto on Friday, December 6th. I hope you come out to that. On Friday, December 7th, we're putting together a Digging Deeper workshop that Saturday afternoon. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be in Waterloo, Ontario. That's Sunday, December 8th, putting together a workshop in the afternoon and a gig probably at the Jazz Room in Waterloo. So if you're out in that neck of the woods, send me an email or uh, hit me here on uh, YouTube or Facebook and let me know if you'd like a spot. These workshops, there's only 15 spots on Saturday and 15 spots on Sunday. So it's definitely gonna get sold out and it could be soon too. So send in your information, I'd love to know about it. Now here's the thing, for everybody not in uh, Eastern Canada, I wanna come to where you're at too. So there's, I'm gonna be traveling around and doing a lot more of this through Europe and through the United States and Canada. So let me know where you're at. And I tell you what, if we can get 15 people together, I'm coming. So keep that in mind, let me know. And uh, double time, I would love to know kind of where you're at with this. So leave some comments and let me know some of the players you love, who played fantastic double time. And I'd be interested to know if you think that that was stuff that they sort of worked out, is that something you hear similar double time from them or do you have the, the instinct, the thought that it's pure improvisation every single time? I'd love to know your take on it. Thank you very much for the wonderful request for the video, and we will see you next time. I hope I'm gonna see you in Ontario. Take care.